to this particular lecture on phytotoxin. In this particular lecture, I shall be discussing different aspects of phytopathogenic bacteria and fungi, which causes different diseases affecting the leaves, stem, root of different plant specimen, which can be vegetables, which can be staple food crop. Now, this particular fungal or bacterial pathogen commonly invade through specific aerial parts like the leaves, enter through the natural opening like stomata, and then they will spread inside and will produce some specific compound, which are organic compound, sometimes they are phenolic, sometimes they are peptide or polypeptide, which will help them to develop within the plant tissue. Hence the name phytotoxin comes. Now, as I was telling that there are different plant pathogen which causes different plant diseases having the ability to produce phytotoxin. One such particular organism is Alternaria, which commonly causes leaf spot disease. And as you can see, the leaf spot can be of different types. But in case of Alternaria leaf spot, there are concentric rings with a brown core. And these are the Alternaria spore or conidia, which actually is oval in shape. And this particular structure is actually the germ tube, which is produced by the germinating Alternaria spore. Similarly, there may be Helminthosporium, that is another common pathogenic fungi, which is causing the leaf spot of maize. Here it is a specific soaked region with a yellowish core, and they are produced by specific Helminthosporium conidia. This Helminthosporium conidia can be actually spindle shaped with a pointed end, and these are the different individual cells of the Helminthosporium conidia. There may be another one which is commonly called the Coletotrichum. Coletotrichum can cause diseases in broad beans, it can cause diseases of sugarcane, and this type of fungi are normally represented by typical sickle shaped spore. And this particular fungi which produce toxin can be cultured in the laboratory. And the best possible medium is the Zapek Dox medium, which contains the dye, potassium hydrogen phosphate, iron sulfate, magnesium sulfate, potassium chloride, agar agar, and distilled water. So this is the choicest medium for any phytopathogenic fungi which will produce toxin. Now commonly, the fungi is inoculated in a liquid medium, which can be glucose minimal media, or it can be glucose with potato extract, it can be fructose minimal media, or it can also be any type of liquid media containing nitrogen source like asparagine. And normally, this type of mycelia will grow in the particular liquid media and will produce the toxin in the substrate or in the liquid. So whenever that liquid is applied to any plant seed, there will be the effect of toxicity observed. Now, there are different ways by which we can see the effect of toxin, or we call it in scientific terms, bioassay of toxin. Ideally, the toxin should be purified and characterized by HPLC, or high performance liquid chromatography. After which, when the toxin is concentrated, it can be applied on germinating seed. And depending upon the number of seeds which cannot germinate, we can easily say what is the impact of toxin on the seed. Like in this case, that is germination of the orobranchi crenata seed. There is specific seeds which are actually losing the power of germination, or we say because of the toxin impact, the seeds are dead. Similarly, toxin bioassay can also be carried out in a unique hydrophyte like Lemna posi costata. Here what happens is the toxin will induce chlorotic lesion and then there will be browning reaction. So depending upon the number of leaves which will show chlorotic lesion or browning reaction, we can say what is the effectivity of that particular toxin. Similarly, another very particular way of determining the toxicity of toxin is the seed germination test. Like the Alternaria toxin, 
when they are treated to cucumber seed, the germination rate is reduced. The germination length is also reduced. That means the length of the radical will be reduced in comparison to control. A very important way of understanding the level of tissue damage is fluorescent microscopy. It is clearly seen in this particular figure where the normal green tissue density is reduced because of toxin damage. So microscopy can be a very useful way of understanding the toxin impact on living plant tissue. Now coming to another aspect, we can easily determine that how many seeds have not germinated, thereby we can calculate the LD50 concentration and we can say what is the level of toxicity of the toxin or we can also study a specific biochemical pathway like the ornithine production pathway and we can say that what is the level of ornithine accumulated and that is how we determine the toxicity of a toxin. But mind you, when a toxin is produced in the lab, it is no normally produced in small amount but when it is produced in industrial scale because of various other uses, it is produced in bulk scale in big flasks and normally as shown here, it is normally grown in a shaker, mechanical shaker. Now coming to a very important aspect that is how signaling occurs with the help of toxin. Say for example, a very important toxin signaling is the induction of serenol production from the propendiol. And actually, this will occur in presence of helminthosporium saccharide and sugarcane extract. So that sugarcane extract is not adequate. Whenever there is helminthosporium saccharide, then the formation of serenol will be there from the propane diol, which is an important signaling activity induced by helminthosporium saccharide on plant tissue. Similarly, another very important metabolic pathway is the biosynthesis of chlorophyll which normally occurs through the delta amino levulinic acid. And actually, the delta amino levulinic acid biosynthesis is inhibited and thereby the chlorophyll synthesis is stopped. So majority of plant toxin will show a definite chlorotic lesion in the plant leaf. A very important aspect is the membrane, the cell membrane of the plant and when the toxin is entering into the cell membrane, it can either cause a modification of the membrane itself or it can go inside and will cause inhibition of protein synthesis. So specific enzymes are not produced or at the same time, it will block different other metabolic pathway as a secondary effect or we call it blocking of messenger pathway by the toxin. Now you all know that the plant cell wall is a very important structure because it is acting as an inhibitory structure which will event the entry of pathogen inside. Here, the strength of the cell wall depends on a particular structure which is the 1,3-glucan or 1,3-linkage in the cellulosic cell wall. So, this glycoside linkage or 1,3-glycoside linkage is actually brought about by the typical 1,3-glucan synthase enzyme. So, a toxin may block that particular enzyme like the helminthosporol from helminthosporium and thereby the strength of the wall is reduced. You can see here, this is the normal cell wall and this is the toxin treated cell wall where the formation of this 1,3-glycoside linkage is not there. So thereby the strength of the cell wall is reduced as a result of which this particular cell is showing immense effect of toxicity. Now, as a matter of fact, whenever a toxin enter into the host cell, it is not only blocking the cell wall, it is not only blocking the membrane, but it is also blocking different activity. Now, there are different activities which are blocked. Primarily, these are the photosynthetic activity, these are the production of energy from mitochondria, or it can be protein synthesis, or it can be different other hormone production. So these are the four major pathways which are blocked by phytotoxin produced by plant pathogenic fungi and bacteria. Now toxin can be classified in two major ways. One is called the common non-host specific toxin, 
Why it is so called? Because it can invade multiple hosts at the same time. That means it can be deadly for many plants at a time. And one such particular toxin is taptoxin. Now, this taptoxin may cause the wildfire symptom on the tobacco leaf. Why it is called wildfire? Because there is a brown core with a yellowish halo surrounding it, which will almost appear like a fire in the leaf. But when we see the electron microscopic view, we will see that it is caused by pseudomonas, that is the pseudomonas syringi, which is causing the disease of wildfire, disease of tobacco. These the bacteria represented by green dots on the leaf surface. So this bacteria will enter and will produce this toxin, which is taptoxin. And this is the structure of taptoxin having multiple amides and amino groups. Now, primarily, this taptoxin is produced from the simple pyruvate, pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid is converted to different other intermediate, like ultimately it will produce the tetrahydrodipicolinate, which will combine with threonine, which is an essential amino acid, to produce taptoxin. So this taptoxin can cause different toxicity. What type of toxicity? It can actually inhibit the biosynthesis of glutamine from glutamate. And so we can call it, this particular taptoxin is inhibiting protein synthesis. But how this protein synthesis, if it is inhibited, then there are different membranes which are affected, like the thylakoid membrane, like the cell membrane, and thereby the plant cell become flaccid and they can die. The second important non-host specific toxin that I will discuss is phaseolotoxin, which is produced again by Pseudomonas syringi, but it is produced by a specific pathogenic variety called actinidae, which causes this disease of kiwi fruit canker. Now, why it is called canker? Because it is causing a hyperplasia or a cancerous growth on the cell surface. These are the cancerous growth on the plant surface caused by Pseudomonas syringi PV actinidae. And so this particular disease is caused by this toxin, which is called phaseolotoxin. And phaseolotoxin as such is represented by this sulfodiamonophosphonylene ornithyl homoarginine. This is a big organic compound. But what does it do? It actually is again blocking the metabolism of ornithine to arginine conversion or ornithine to putrescine conversion. And because of this, there will be specific chlorotic lesion, and there will be also an important enzyme which will be inhibited, which is nothing but ornithine carbamyl transferase. The tentotoxin is produced by Alternaria alternata or Alternaria tenuis. This is the conidia of Alternaria tenuis, which is typically oval shaped conidia produced in long chain. And these long chains are produced whenever they find any susceptible host. So this is the tentotoxin structure, which is actually a tetrapeptide. And this cyclic tetrapeptide can be produced from different amino acids, like arginine. It is also produced from adipose sugar, or it is also produced from isopentanyl pyrophosphate. So different primary metabolites within plant cell will be converted or will be utilized by the pathogen to produce the tentotoxin. Now, coming to the inhibitory pathways of tentotoxin, primarily it is inhibiting the phosphorylation process, both in respiration as well as in photosynthesis. So the energy generation will be in sheer doldrums. Now we come to the next important group of toxin, which is commonly called the host specific toxin, as because it is inhibiting invading specific host in other host plant, it is of no use. One such toxin is the victorin, which is produced by Cochleobolus victori. This is the conidia, which causes the disease of the leaf spot or leaf blight of oats. And chemically, this particular toxin victorin is a complex polypeptide. It is formed of alanine, and proline. They are D-alanine and L-alanine and also proline and the AEO protein. Now it has been seen certain oat plants are not invaded by this particular 
toxin. I'll come to that. But prior to that, where it is inhibiting? It is primarily inhibiting the subunit, the lower subunit of the photosynthetic apparatus. Which particular apparatus? The main enzyme for dark phase is Rubisco. So the Rubisco LSU is being blocked by this particular toxin. And as I told you, there are some plants which are resistant and these resistant plants commonly actually can produce a particular enzyme or a protease which will destroy the toxin as a result of which the disease development doesn't occur. And at the same time, there will be also an important role of calcium. So if the calcium is present in the cell, the effect of Victorine will be more. And if the calcium is less, then the disease development will be reduced. So we can actually alter the disease by the presence or absence of calcium. Next important toxin, which is commonly called the T-toxin, because it is produced by a particular fungi called Cochleobolus heterotrophus res T. Because of this res T, we call it T-toxin, and this T-toxin is being produced by the reproductive spores. Here, I have shown the ascus and the ascospores inside the particular Cochleobolus fungi. And this particular infection will produce the T-toxin. And there are specific genes which are activated, indicated by these dark bands. These are the pathogen producing gene. So wherever the T-toxin is active, these genes will be active. And we call it the virulent gene which is causing the disease. And if the virulent gene is active, there will be specific toxins produced like the Tox1A and Tox1B. And this particular Tox1 gene can also be reduced or it can reduce the ATP production and thereby it will inhibit the plant cell metabolism. Coming to the next important toxin, which is host specific, we call it Helminthosporium or Cochleobolus carbonum. In other words, it is called HC toxin, which is causing the common leaf spot disease of maize. This is how the leaf spot occurs in maize and the maize leaves are dead. And this is the conidia of this particular Helminthosporium carbonum. This is the cyclic structure of HC toxin. And like other toxin, it is also a tetrapeptide where there will be L-alanine, D-alanine, L-AOE, and D-proline. And this particular toxin or HC toxin will produce the tox2 in product, which will normally inhibit protein synthesis. And there are some plants which can be resistant to this particular disease. And these mess plants have a unique gene, which is HM1 or HM2 gene, which will produce a specific enzyme called HC toxin reductase, and thereby the LAOE protein will be inhibited, and the toxin will be rendered ineffective, and the plants will show resistance. AM toxin, or in other words, it is so-called because of the Alternaria meli toxin. What is important about this fungi Alternaria meli? These are the conidia which will germinate and will cause disease both on the fruit, causing the scab disease on the apple fruit, or it can cause lips, leaf spot in the form of brownish lesion. And this brownish lesion with age will gradually become brown. So this is the typical structure of the AM toxin. And this AM toxin is a cyclic structure, cyclic peptide, and there may be different types, one, two, three, depending upon this R structure. That is the side chain R, this one will determine what type of toxin it is, type one, type two, or type three, having OCH3H and OH side chain. Normally, as I was telling, this AM toxin will be in the form of germination of conidia on the leaf surface. This is a particular microscopic view where the conidia is germinating to produce the germ tube and the germ tube enters into stomata. So this type of structure is commonly present on the leaf surface through which the germ tube enters and the toxin is produced inside the mesophyll tissue. Now, as I was telling you that there are some plants which are showing inhibition, there are some plants which are developing sensitivity. So there may be specific reaction that develops inside the plant cell because of the pathogenic fungi or because of the bacterial recognition. 
And depending upon the number of cells affected, we can see that how this pathogen is getting inside and developing into a major disease-causing organism and ultimately causing cell death. So it is all causing the disease, but the intensity of the disease varies. Now, any plant like human will not allow the development of the disease. So there will be different strategies by which the plant will show defense to that particular pathogenic fungi. In what way? At the outset, it will be stopped by some protein which will not allow the entry of the pathogen inside. Or if it has entered, it will be actually vacuolated. And this vacuole is like a barrier. So this fungi or fungal spore or the bacteria will be given out along with the vacuole. And thirdly, there may be different defense-related secretion produced by the Golgi or the dictyosome, which will also destroy and the debris will be given out as shown here in this figure. But considering the effect of pathogen and the array of events, there may be different types of ways by which a disease develops. And when I say that a particular plant cell is showing resistance, it can be either mechanical resistance, that is the pathogen is not allowed inside, there is a barrier there. And even if it is entering, there may be defense reaction in the form of phytoalexin production, in the form of PR protein production, in the form of generation of polysaccharide. So it all depends how much amount of these compounds are being produced by the plant cell, which will render them resistant against specific pathogen. So in this particular disease, we can say that the symptoms only arise when these particular secondary metabolites are low. That is, the fungal toxin has won over the plant cell. So in this particular lecture, what we have studied? We have studied what is phytotoxin. We have studied their source. We have studied their bioassay. We have studied their signaling pathway. And we have also studied their classification, that is what are host specific, what is what host non-specific, and the different types of host specific, non-host specific toxins, their toxicity, and the controlling measure. Thank you.